everybody's first day of MTAC been? It's been pretty hopping for us. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go. You guys are full of energy, which we love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, should we introduce ourselves? Yes, let's do that. Uh, thank you. This is a women in anime and gaming, and we are indeed uh, women in anime and uh, voice gaming stuff. That's what we do. Check, check. Yeah. Check. Yep. Uh, I'm Caitlin Glass, and you know me from things like Full Metal Alchemist and Oran High School Host Club, and in the world of games, I am Cami White in Street Fighter, and I'm in Borderlands and stuff. Yep. <laughs> uh, my name is Sherami Lee, and Woo. in the world of anime, uh, you know me from Sword Art Online as Asuna, uh, wow. Lucy in Fairy Tale. Um, what's one that gets forgotten very often? Suzaha in Steins Gate, yes. Um, and in the world of games, I'm also in Borderlands. I voice Gage, uh, I voice Makoto in Persona 5, I voice Female V in Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, and I can now talk about. Uh, I am one of the seven, the imagined, in Woo! Fortnite. Yes. That was fun. Oh, 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 my I am Xanthi Nguyen. Uh, uh, in anime, I am uh, platelet in Souls at Work. Uh, I am uh, Nenma and Anahana, the flower we saw that day. Makia, um, as Makia. And um, in video games, I am Haru Okumura in Persona 5, and Marianne in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. 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 And, and I am Kari Walgren, and in anime, I am uh, Haruko in FLCL, and uh, Selty and Durara, uh, Saber in Fate Zero and Fate Stay Night, uh, Fu in Samurai Champloo, and then in games, I do Melina and Katana in Mortal Kombat 11. So cool. Uh, so fun. Uh, <laughs> let's see, I did uh, Port Nova in uh, Call of Duty, uh, and then I did, uh, oh gosh, I, it's like stressful thinking of things. Um, Evelyn Parker in yeah. Yeah. Cyberpunk 2077, we've been talking about that a lot today, um, and uh, Rain and Tales of Symphonia. So I have a theory of why it's so hard for us to remember what we've worked on, because I'm like, when I'll struggle, people are like, oh, it's because you've worked on so many things you don't remember them, and I was like, it's not that at all. I think that after I sign my NDA, I mentally tell myself, you know nothing that just happened. Yes! <laughs> and then like when you start thinking back, you're like, what did I tell myself that I couldn't remember? And then when you want to remember, you're like, why did I tell myself, like, I've given myself amnesia about yes. things that I love. I think that's the theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't I self-hypnotize myself to do things that would be helpful for me? Right. <laughs> and also, with, especially with video games, the secrecy around it is so huge that I'm sure you guys have had this. They always do code names. Yes. So I can't tell you the number of times where I've worked on Project Orange. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I like I remember working on uh, I was I was doing RNA for Final Fantasy 15, and I didn't know for the first three sessions what game I was working on no because way. it was like Project Ballpark. Yeah. You know, it was like really obscure names. Yes. Yeah. I was terrified because for when I got when I auditioned for Cyberpunk, they said it was Codename Cheetah. Yes. And so I auditioned for Codename Cheetah, and I like was like, man, I really like this project. And I went home and I Googled as many things as I could, like all these clues to try to see like what this might be. And the only thing it kept leading me back to was the like, Cyberpunk trailer. And I was like, there's no way I auditioned for that. So then I do the demo and I walk in and they're like. So do you know what you're working on today? I'm like, this is a terrifying thing, because if you say the wrong game, you're like, I'm so excited. I'm working on this, right? And they're like, no, you're not. Uh, so I was like, I think I know what I'm doing here today. And they're like, do you want to guess? And I was like, I do not. I would rather you just tell me. <laughs> they're like, you know, just, just like be reckless with it. Just you know, see if you can guess. And I go, that's okay, I like my job. So, uh, I this is just the demo, you can easily replace me at this point, so you just tell me what we're working on today. And uh, they're like, this is for Cyberpunk. I was like, oh, okay. That's what I thought. They're like, no, it's not. I was like, no, legitimately it was, but I thought surely that was not it. So that happens to me all the time, 
So I'll just walk in, they're like, what are you working on today? I go, nothing, I don't know, I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just here. <laughs> I'm gonna work on whatever it is you tell exactly. me that I'm doing. I'm terrified. Yes. <laughs> By the way, guys, we're just kind of winging it because yeah. it's been forever, or maybe even never, that the four of us have ever been on a panel together. Never. But never. if you have questions or things you would like to ask us, feel free to line up at these microphones here in either aisle. And when you know there's some downtime, we'll look to you to help us know what to say. I have worked on projects with all of these people. Yeah. But I have never actually acted at the same time as any of them except for Kari. That's we right. had to share a booth together to help minimize vocal stress on a game. They would help oh. us alternate, which was very nice. How do you, what's me, cool. elaborate? So, uh, we worked on The Last of Us. Part two. Part two. So, Kari would do a section, and she would do her lines, and then I would do my lines. Sometimes we got to oh, act I together. See. I get it. Okay. Oh. Which was very fun. We were both militia members, so we if were. you played the game, you probably uh, killed us a lot. Killed us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it was really cool because especially with video games, you almost never get to record with other people. So uh, it, it was just a, a really lovely. It was uh, so much fun. Except Sheremy's really hard to get along with because <laughs> she's so difficult. You can tell that so. her personality is like rough. Yeah. And rough, you guys. I loved one day we showed up in sundresses. We did. To be in these hot pink, hot pink sundresses, and <laughs> we like showed up all these bright colors. <laughs> Uh, my favorite Method acting. My favorite day was us just like threatening how many people we were gonna stab in the neck. Yes. And like we were just wearing sundresses, and the the director's like, "You really guys?" And we're like, "What?" <laughs> he was like, "And it's gotta be you two together." I was it's like, you scheduled us. But it that's what I thought made it especially scary. It was so good. It was so good, and we I, looked like kindergarten teachers. That we were just out for everybody. blood. Yeah. Out for blood. It was yeah, a lot of fun. And we got to do this thing. We got to do all these uh, reactions when you were drowning. We oh, had a whole day of like love, drowning love, love and, that. and getting your throat slit while you're being drowned. Oh, okay. So we got to gargle water. Yes. And we're like spitting water all over the place. Fun. It was really a fun day. I really, I really wish that you could demonstrate <laughs> underneath the mask. What do you guys want to see? Yeah. 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 Just yeah. like you were being drowned underneath yeah. the mask. It's, it's literally like you're drowning in your own blood. And, and we both have the cutest out. dresses on. And so we're like, okay, excuse the woman. And we take a drink and it's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and just spitting water and spit everywhere. I feel so sorry for whoever was like cleaning up the microphones afterwards. <laughs> That was the best part. We were wearing the hats. The, the head mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. hey. Man, it was so much fun. I left that and I was like, that was so cool. And I looked for every excuse to do that now, always. I'm like, can I, I, I could do the... I could do the gargling reactions and I'll spit water and they're like, please don't. It's please fine. Don't. It's, yeah. It sounds fine. It sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just for some context about like why you would want to have someone in a video game panel with you to break up the time, it is a lot more strenuous than just recording anime or other pre-lay stuff. So in say an anime session, you're doing your character's lines and you only do, you could do a whole page of lines at a time, but you only have to say each one once. And in between you, someone else is talking. So it's like having a normal conversation. And then the engineer and the director are going to listen and review all of that. And then when you need to change stuff, a few minutes later, then you'll talk again. In a video game session, it is just a spreadsheet of words. And it is you talking and screaming and dying. And not just once, but each time you see one, you're going to do two to four versions of that line at a time. So it is tough. So I'm kind of envious of this session where you just go for 30 minutes and then it's someone it, else's it was, turn. It was so nice. And they recognized like that they would shred you yeah. by the end of the session. You knew like, we will not work uh, after this. And I made the mistake a couple times of scheduling sessions and was like, oh, this is no. stupid. Yeah, they, 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 because they really wanted the intensity of those, you know, I mean, it, those death sounds and those pain reactions like they wanted you to feel it hardcore yeah so they and they wouldn't ever schedule us i don't think for more than two hours no we but and and it was broken up over 
oh my gosh, like a year and a half, two yeah. years. So we wouldn't work on it consecutively. We'd do a session and then like not hear anything for a couple months. Yeah. And we're like, I guess that was the last one. And then they'd be like, nope. Like, no, please come, come back and die some more. And I think the code name, I hope we're not, they're not gonna be like, so the code names were also part of your NDA, that's confidential too. But the code name for The Last of Us had two code names, which was very confusing. Oh. For a brief time it was Dorothy, and then it was T2, and then it was Dorothy again. And I was oh, like, what goodness. am I working on? What See, I never know. Yeah, I, 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 Jen, I mind wipe myself as well. Yeah, Afterwards. I guess I just remember the code names. That's all I remember. Yep. I have now called Persona 5 Strikers what the code name was. I'm like, yeah, when Scramble came out, they're like, what's Scramble? And I'm like, oh, that was the code name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like y'all have some questions. What oh, about sweet. You? Oh, oh, me? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, so my question is for, for any one of you four, mm. but I was wondering what was the hardest line or the, or the hardest character you've ever had to play in any of the anime that you've done? One of the hardest I've had to do um, is um, the Madoka Magica um, Rebellion movie, oh. and because I voice a character called Nagisa, and she's also this other witch form uh, called Bebe, and uh, Bebe is, uh, speaks in only nonsensical gibberish and cheese names, and like, <laughs> it's like in cheese names? Yes, random cheeses all the time, and random gibberish in between, and it's all phonetically written out, and I've never seen the script before I go in, it's all cold reading, and then trying to read the gibberish with the emotional attempt that, that the director has given me, and trying to match the mouth flap, and it's this tiny little creature, and it's constantly moving and bouncing around, and I'm like, my brain is melting, trying to like read and like emote and do the things. So it was. Can you please give us a sample? <laughs> I just, I am dying. Gibberish and cheese names. Just sounds tell pretty us. Great. Just tell us your favorite cheese. And yes. have you ever eaten cheese? Have you ever like had to eat cheese after the session? <laughs> I had to. Okay. <laughs> so just a little bit of gibberish and throw in your favorite cheese. Because the character was constantly eating cheese too. She's uh, you baby? I made the end of my vagina. That's so cute. It's so adorable. What was cute. the cheese that you were like? I'm starving and I want this cheese. Like I need this cheese right now. Probably like all the cheese. Yes. <laughs> Swiss. Swiss. Sport. <laughs> Charcuterie. Charcuterie. Yeah. For Sandy. That's, so funny. That's really awesome. I think. Yeah, and I, I, I just have one more thing to say. Sure. And, and this, this is for Zay. This is for Kari. One of my favorite lines you did was um, in Lucky Star. I can't recall. I can't recall how it went, but it was had something to do about prejudice, damn you. Oh my gosh! I wish I could remember that line now because that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could tell me that line. But I did love Cogany. I, I, I mean, I was saying this, I think, earlier at my panel that she reminds me so much of what I was like in junior high, mm -hmm. uh, and because she was just kind of a little bit uptight, a little bit type A. And, but she really loved her friends, and she's very book smart and kind of a little bit of a, you know, eyes to the grindstone, but then like a little bit of a romantic underneath, Aww. secretly. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I wish I could remember the line though. Oh. If you think of it, holler and I'll just yell it out into the distance. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> you, you ladies are awesome, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. That's so sweet. Wanna to hop to the other side? Other side. Uh, so I work in a different side of the game industry, not voice acting, but um, my question was, do you think that there is still difficulties that women face um, above men in voice acting, and how have you experienced that through your journey in the industry? Oh, you just asked the juicy question. <laughs> yes. Yes. Get right to it. If I had a prize, like if I had little prizes, I would throw one yes, to you. Yes, you get First all of the all, prizes. First of all, because we ask, you said you're in a different part of yeah, the gaming industry. Yeah, what do you do? Oh, I, I'm going to school for conceptual art. And Yay! That's so cool. Thank you so much. That's yes, amazing. Love that. Oh, I have thoughts, but go. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. collecting mine. Yeah, we 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 want to follow your lead. Sure? Do you yes, go go go. Take okay. us down the train. Uh, yes, it is harder for women. Uh, uh, 
in general, I think, because um, for, for one thing, for a lot of years, there was what we call the Smurfette syndrome. So you'd be doing a, a show or a game where there's one girl and three guys, or one girl and four guys, or one girl and five guys. So, so there were a lot less roles for a long time. And the thing I love is that I see that changing. And just even, you know, you talking about going into this, I now I feel like there's such a shift because more of my directors now are women than men. Uh, there are more female showrunners. There are more female writers. Uh, I mean, because I've been doing this for 100 years. Uh, <laughs> more like, I think, 21 at this point. Um, and I've seen that really change. And so, so, but we still do fight a lack of roles compared to guys. Um, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I know that over the years, uh, pay has not always been, uh, I know that I, I, I have a couple of instances where I have been paid less than my male co-stars. Uh, and in one case, I was let go from a job because I wanted to be paid the same as my, my male uh, cohorts on the game. And they, uh, they said, well, if she won't take less, we're gonna hire somebody else. And I said, I'm sorry, I won't take less. And they hired someone else. So, uh, so the, Yes, there are some difficulties still, but I like the changes that I'm seeing. And the more we get folks like you yes. getting involved in all different facets, like I'm seeing more women engineers, yes. audio engineers yes. in the studios. Yes. Uh, there's so many different parts in the process of putting together a video game or a cartoon or an anime. There's so many different jobs, script adapters, um, you, you know, writers, directors, translators, translators, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and I'm seeing more and more women getting into all facets of it. So I, I think that's where we're going to start. To piggyback on that, I just want to encourage any of you um, who are interested in what it is we do. It's probably one of the most frequently asked questions is how do I become a voice actor? And I'm like, what if you thought about not becoming one? And I don't mean that in a salty way, but like asking yourself why it is that you want that. So often, oftentimes, a character is our connection to the media that we're consuming, right? So we just like, of course, when you think, I wanna be a part of that, so the first thing you go to is, I wanna be a character, I guess I need to be an actor. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> in the whole world of anime, so I'm a full-time ADR director for Crunchyroll, formerly Funimation, and there are so many jobs in the anime industry you guys, and they're actually far less competitive than trying to be a voice actor. <laughs> um, anything that you might have an interest in, there's like an anime version of that. I mean, maybe not if you're gonna be a doctor or something along those lines, but like if you find yourself good at math, it, hey, we need accountants, yeah. you know? People that do all kinds of things, lawyers for, for anime companies and game companies. So, I mean, if you're like, you really have, been bitten by the acting bug, then by all means, pursue that. But um, I just want to encourage you that their anime and games and Japanese games aren't going anywhere. So it's definitely a world that you can be a part of. Just just get, you know, broaden your horizons, be a little more creative than just, I have to be a voice actor. And, and I have to say, based on what they were both saying, it's so true. The more that we see women on the marketing team, on the production side of things, helping make the game, that's when we get more female characters because if you guys are in the room saying, no, she doesn't have to look like this, no, she doesn't have to sound like this, or maybe we could market the show this way, maybe we could do things like that, that's when it starts to change in the larger scheme of things. So if people will say like, I hate how they marketed this character, I really don't think that they respected women or did the best that they could, or I don't think that they got the right audience. I'm like, well, if it's a room full of 16 guys and there's no girls, or there's one girl in the back being like, not true, not true, they buy it, it's fine, whatever. She doesn't really, she's outnumbered. So the more that we get people in those different jobs, 
the more we get to start seeing things on a larger scale. Uh, so as everybody said, thank you so much for jumping in yeah. and doing that because it definitely affects Good what we you. do. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? That's prejudice, damn you! <laughs> that is so That's cute. That's a perfect end to that. That is like, so segment. cute. That is the perfect ending. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> That's Kari as the voice of the girl in the back of the room with yeah, 16 yeah, yeah. guys. Yes! Oh, yes! <laughs> and now somebody needs to animate that scene and it just shows up. It's like a, an animated version behind the scenes of working in anime and video games. <laughs> yes, please. Kari, you must uh, avoid the, uh, voice. Marketing executive number one. Exactly. That's who it's going to be. <laughs> Spin-off. So you heard it here first. <laughs> I guess we should stick with their questions. They've got good yeah. ones. You guys are getting good questions go here. Go for it. Oh, do I go? Yes. Yes, please. Hello again, ladies. So, Hello. well, my question is, what is the most awkward or funny direction you've gotten in anime or video games? <laughs> I can't answer this because my dad is in the audience. <laughs> Which, by the way, can uh, Kari's dad stand up so he can cheer? Where is my papa? Where, dad, are you there? He's right oh, oh, He just Hello, drove in. Dad. You guys, it's the cutest. He drove in. He and my mom drove in from Kansas today. Oh, to, yay! To so, sorry to embarrass you, papa. <laughs> Not the first time. Oh! <laughs> That's the most awkward direction that you've gotten. That's the most awkward direction I've gotten. That's prejudice, damn you! <laughs> Caitlin Glass takes over the role. Now we're number one in the background. People online would be like, why did they recast? <laughs> Kari Glass asked for more money. Actually, so that, that, is, that is probably the most awkward commentary or the most confusing commentary that we've gotten is not from a director in the room. Usually everybody in the production side of things, the engineer, the writer, the director, we're all like, we're, this is a collaborative environment. We all want to work together to make this happen. We know if there's sometimes awkward lines that have to be said or funny things. Everybody is very sensitive. Nobody wants anybody to feel uncomfortable. Uh, so I would say probably some of the most awkward direction or commentary that we've ever gotten comes from the internet after it's all ready up. That's when you'll get notes and you're like, I don't think that you listened to the show. <laughs> or like, that's a fair note, but uh, that's not who got the job. Um, and sometimes people say things very mean about people's appearance and we're like, it was a voiceover. Like my appearance was totally not relevant. Um, so that's probably, at least in my experience, the most awkward direction or commentary that I've received in video games and voice acting is the internet. Mm -hmm. Curse you. Internet. Mine was make it sound more like you're pooping. <laughs> oh, that is a weird one. It's, have you, you guys have gotten that, right? Because, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> more like you are pooping or aren't? Well, listen, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you this because it's going to be helpful I'm for those of you that want to be voice actors out there. Um, when you are struggling in a scene or if you're, if you're fighting in a game or something like that, um, you have to make it sound believable. And so sometimes some pe people get in there and they're like, uh. Uh, mm, you know, and you're like, okay, we, we don't believe that. So the note that they often give you is make it sound more like you're pooping. Uh, huh? uh, that's after an especially bad Mexican dinner, but you know, uh, but yeah, so, so I think that's the most embarrassing direction. Yeah. I've Sorry. Is that too much? We're no, no. <laughs> this is an evening panel. Hi. We're in Again, though, this is when, like, you know, if that's something that you're like, I would never want to make those reactions, then yeah. voice acting, not the career path for you. Correct. Because that's like, it, it, that was one of the most awkward things that I had to do in the beginning was learning how to do fighting reactions. Yeah. Because it's not something that we normally are like, yeah, I'm going to shadow box in this padded room by myself. Yeah. Um, but that, that's part of the job. And it is a little awkward because there's a window and there's people, people are staring at you it. like you're an animal at the zoo. And you got to make weird noises like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for your question. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Switching sides. Yes, my question is for Jeremy. 
Uh, in recording for Female V, did you have a favorite life path between Corpo, Street Kid, and uh, Nomad? It's so hard. It would change uh, regularly. I will say, I think Street Kid or Nomad were probably my favorites while I was recording. Um, but then when I was like watching other people play, because I watched a lot of people's playthroughs, I was like, oh man, Corpo's really fun. So for me, it would totally depend on the day, like what <laughs> mood I was in. I'd be like, you know, I wish I was doing a Corpo life path today, but we're not. We're doing, but uh, it, I mean, that game was such a fun experience and I think I worked on it. There were days that I worked on it like every single day and I would just come in and I was like, I had so many moments when I was like, man, I'm so lucky to get to spend this hour and a half in traffic because I get to go do this job today. And this is such a gift. And to be employed on one project for that long, to be able to constantly remind yourself, I'm so lucky to have a job. I'm so lucky to have a job. That it really didn't matter which life path I was getting to do that day, because I was getting to live as an actor. And uh, it's not like on camera I would ever get cast as female B, ever. There were multiple times that people would be like, so what are you doing today? Uh, Cyberpunk? Oh, doing what? Female B, really? And they would just like sit back, really? You're like, thank you, I, I, I know, I know it's a floral dress, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll wear a light up jacket next week. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to choose. I, I, it's like picking a different playlist for what you're in the mood for that day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hiya. If you had to choose an anime or video game character, which one would you be? Oh my. To like, become? Wow. <laughs> of all of them. I'm, assu I'm assuming you mean of one that we have played, like if they were a real human. Yes. Oh. Mm. Mm. Do you guys feel like when you make this decision that the other ones are going to come alive at night and be like, we're just going to kill her while she sleeps? Am I the only one that's like terrified of that? Like they're going to come alive Toy Story style and like stand over my bed and be like, really? That was the choice? <laughs> A lot of mine are very good with swords or magic and violence in general. So I'll, I'll be very careful. Ooh, no, they can't be mad about this one. Uh, I loved getting to work on the show. Uh, earlier this year, I got to co-direct a show and I got to voice a little boy uh, named Kotaro in Kotaro Lives Alone. Yeah. Oh, you were in that? So, cute. Cute. so I got to voice Kotaro and I got to direct. So that was one of my favorite roles Woo. because I got to do co-direction and uh, get to voice the little kid and I really did not, I was terrified of how it was gonna turn out and people are like, he's very sweet. And I, I love that no matter what that kid has been through, he's always able to lead with love and choose love. And I'm like, that's kind of what I would like to live with all the time. And also none of my girl characters are gonna take down a four turning five year old child. They're just not gonna do that. Yeah. That show is on Netflix, Ooh, by the way. Yes, if you haven't yes. seen it. Thank you, Caitlin. I mean, who wouldn't want to be Haruki Fujioka and go to like a super rich school and be surrounded by very attractive men? Um, I picked that. It's, it's the life I want. What about your gibberish cheese eating thing? You want to be that? Hey, it's living up good. <laughs> Hanayo from Love Live because she gets to become an idol and eat a lot of rice, rice. and have friends, <laughs> friendship, love, singing, yes. Hanayo, so sweet, oh, I love Love Live, you guys. I love that we're in it. <laughs> I would maybe, I would maybe say Selty from New Rara Rara because, I mean, she's got that cool scythe and she rides the motorbike cool and she's got the cool yeah. outfit and the kitty cat helmet and the yeah i mean she's just so cool she's wrong. like anime cat woman and i and i just That's she's true. anime cat woman yeah That's so true. and she's and cool. and just i want to be able and there's like a film noir element to the whole thing i think so i just want my my thoughts to be like this ro running voiceover through my life 
with a cool jazz score in the background. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I thought. That's a really good song. I'm here for it. <laughs> where was that? I forgot what side that was on. So now we're over here. Okay. Um, I have another question for Jeremy. Um, so what was your favorite voice line to record in Steins Gate? And can you, uh, like, say <laughs> Do it. Do it. Dance, monkey. So <laughs> it, it was one of my most favorite moments. Um, uh, and it, I, it's, it's a spoiler, so I won't get into it. But it's the, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. The whole, you'll. I did break down reading it, and that was actually one of my favorite directions. Sherry, that was so lovely. I couldn't understand any of it. <laughs> Can we do it again? Make it a little less emotional and a little more audible? Uh, so yeah, I was crying so much doing that scene, so that was one of my favorite lines from her. But she's got a lot of ones. The other one at the very, the, the very beginning when we first meet her, and she's like, saying a bunch of weird, quirky things, or she's like, okie dokie, like all that stuff was very fun too. So I guess super Can you say, hey, hey you, what's up? up as yeah. Uh -huh. hey -o! What's up? <laughs> Thank you. That's so cute. Yeah, she's very fun. She's into time travel. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually here to answer a question that Shermy was uh, asking about the two code words for the uh, Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, am I busted? So no, it's just that uh, whenever the uh, story went to one character to another, that's probably what it was. Oh, that's why we got two. Okay, cool. And the uh, question I, I wanted to ask is that: uh, Did you guys ever want to try uh, mocap? I totally want to get into that. I live in Dallas, and we don't really have a lot of opportunity for it. Um, Gearbox is in Dallas. We're going to make Borderlands and some other cool stuff. And they do motion capture there, but it's typically different actors um, doing all of the body stuff than the actors that are cast to do the voices. I don't know why that is. Who knows? Is there a motion capture studio in? It's at their building. At their oh, it's, place. it's in Dallas. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but it's like Gearbox's studio for that in gotcha. their facilities in Frisco. Have you been? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's like another place that does it. So I just don't have much opportunity to do it, but um, these fabulous Los Angeles actors may have all done it before. I don't know. I've done motion capture a couple of times. I also like doing facial capture where it will be somebody else's voice, but you do the facial expressions and you have to, similar to TikTok, you have to memorize their cadence and then just do the facial expressions. I don't know why they do it backwards like that, but it is very fun. I'm curious why it wouldn't just be the speaker's face. I haven't the slightest idea, but there have been multiple times that I've gotten brought in and they'll play the audio files for you two times and then you've got to try to match it as perfectly as possible while acting. And maybe it's because they're reading and so they don't want, I don't know what the situation is, but I've done that before. I did motion capture for Horizon Zero Dawn um, and thank goodness Horizon Zero Dawn, we had a, a long rehearsal process because I broke my ankle. <laughs> the day before my callback, and I thought it was just a sprain, and then I got the job, and then I realized oh, no. it wasn't getting better, and it was still blue. Oh, no. And I went to the doctor, and they were like, no, you broke it, and I cried and said, but I have motion that must be captured. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put me in a cast. So they gave me a boot, and I, I really just remember being on my very first day of rehearsal for Horizon Zero Dawn, walking in on crutches, and they just looked at me, and I was like, I don't even need these. I'll throw them if I must. Like, that's all I remember is my intro. Not really a great. They're like, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And the most ironic thing was there was a person who had to have a broken foot in the show. And I was in the scene with her, but I was the one who had not had the broken foot. So it was two days. I was two days able to walk when I got to have my motion capture. Oh my gosh. It was great fun. So I would love to get to do motion capture again, uh, a little further removed from an injury. <laughs> Anybody else? I haven't done it before. I would like to. I mean, I, I feel like um, nowadays things, I, uh, like a lot of things are becoming a performance capture. We, they like capture everything. Yeah. And like, I feel like I've gotten so used to doing voiceover and like standing still that I just don't know what to do with my body anymore. So I don't know, I've taken, started to take some beginner classes just to be like, all right, this is how a normal person stands and sits, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Learning how to human again. <laughs> I've done, I've done some motion capture. Um, 
I do remember doing um, all the motion capture for Ace Combat some years back, and it was, I was told that I jump weird. <laughs> like, it, we had a couple scenes where we had to like jump in a celebratory fashion, like jump up and down. Yeah. And, and there was a guy that was just like, you jump really weird. And I was like, what? I'm j I just jumped, you know? But if I, I, so then I would find myself like looking at myself in the mirror and jumping and being like, <laughs> okay, well if I jump more like this, is that? So I don't know, I had a, I had a, a thing about that. Um, and then I, I had, you know, done a lot of facial capture and stuff too. And, and then I, I booked this super cool job that I mind wiped because it's not out yet. But, um, but I, I had to go out of the country to do the motion capture. And it was going to be the first of many trips to this country to do this. Wow. And I was in this country and, uh, all the news is in a foreign language, but I was picking up that something bad was going on in the world, and uh, my fellow actors through the days were like, oh, you know, the NBA just shut down, and oh, you know, uh, this is turning into a big thing, and I just made it back out of the country, and two days later, uh, the shutdown for COVID started. And oh, so man. it was such a bummer because, you know, we were there for, for about a week doing the first couple of scenes. And it was one of those things where you're just like, this is juicy. Like yeah. this is yeah. something, and, and the physicality of it and everything was, as an actor, such an exciting thing to explore and not something that I had gotten to do uh, for a while. And, um, but unfortunately, you know, that was two years ago and after production finally picked back up, they had to get someone in that country to do the rest of my motion capture and I could only finish the voiceover. So it was like, you know, my heart still hurts a little bit about that one. What could have been? But uh, so hopefully more in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Hello, ladies. Um, my question is for all slash any of you, but especially for Miss Chloe. Um, have you noticed any differences in, particularly as a woman voicing women, in Western animation versus Japanese animation? In that the, is in a the portrayal of the women. Mm -hmm. Question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wow, that is a great question. Um, yes, there there is a difference and I find that the difference is more pronounced with how much the, uh, the Japanese clients are involved in the process of recording and how flexible or inflexible they are to, um, to input. And, and I'll give you a perfect example. Um, some years back, I was working on um, a, a video game and it was one that was being translated from J Japanese into English. And um, I had been hired to play this character that was in her early 30s, and she was the uh, commander of a military regime. But in the original Japanese, she sounded like, Hajimemashite! And the American director, who was a female, said, listen, uh, an American audience is probably not going to buy, A, that this woman is the commander so of a, an entire platoon of soldiers, but, and also that she's in her early 30s. <laughs> so uh, they did convince that Japanese client to make her more, boots on the ground, we gotta go into battle, now, go, go, go! So it was more that, because Physically, she looked like that. She looked tough and you know strong. So that's a, a, a case where there was some flexibility. But there have been other roles where I I don't think that they translated as well from anime to to an American audience for those same reasons. Um, and I think I think that the American creators and 
studios and companies are maybe just like a, a little bit more in tune to a wider range of female archetypes, shall we say, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's, I guess, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think there's a trend in, and it's a good trend, in newer Western animation, be it in film or what you see on Disney Channel or Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, to really embrace all of the different ways women uh, can be women, um, or even just female gendered people <laughs> can be. And they're open to that, like all sizes, shapes, and colors, and all walks of life, just different roles in life. And um, Japan is just a little less open to that, I guess. Uh, or at least in uh, the anime that they make. So it doesn't mean that there aren't people who can't push those boundaries, but I think you're more going to see that in, probably in films, maybe, in Japanese films, than you are in the anime series uh, that you're watching. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank Great you question. so much. Sure. Um, earlier you guys mentioned that um, you like tend to forget the characters that you play. So I was wondering if you have like any phrases that are like just engraved in your mind from like specific <laughs> characters. For sure. Um, oftentimes we have what's called a reference line. So when you audition, you do a voice the way you think this character will be. And sometimes even after you're cast, that isn't exactly what the director had in mind, but they heard something that they wanted from your performance. So you'll craft it into something and like, as a director, I know I do this. Once we really land on that voice, I have our engineer save those few files. And for the, like the rest of that day's session, he'll be putting that one little line, or phrase, or sentence in what's called our pre-roll, what we hear before we talk, just to remind us, this is the voice, this is the voice, this is the voice. And um, yeah, that's typically what, is, what sticks around. So in Oron, and it's the line I always do at the table when people ask me, can you do a line of Haruhis? It's, I'm not a hero, I'm an honor student, and who are you calling Haruchan? I said that all the time. Um, I said that even when I wasn't recording, because back when we did the show, Haruhi as a character and her, her character type, her voice type, I'd never done it before. So while I was very glad to be doing it, I lacked a little bit of confidence about it. Like, what is this voice? What can I do with this voice? So I was just like always saying that all the time when I wasn't in the booth. So I'm not a hero, I'm an honor student. And who are you calling Haruchan? And now it just is there all the time. People go, could you do the, and I'm not a hero. I'm like, they don't even finish their sentence. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that's definitely one that has stuck with me. I, I definitely remember a line from Asuna because it was Bryce and I's first time to go to a convention together. I remember a lot of my reference lines for the same reason Caitlin mentioned, but this one was because Bryce and I were doing an autograph signing and they'd have been ticketed and we had to get through this set amount of people and we weren't sure anybody was gonna show up. And if you guys met Bryce and I this weekend, you know we will talk <laughs> four hours. There's a reason why we are not seated next to each other. It is. Not because Bryce and I don't want to sit next to each other. It is because if we're close to each other, we're like, Bryce, look at this. Yeah, I see. That's amazing. And then we have ruined everything for everyone. So the producer, Hitaway from Anaplex, talked to Bryce and I about 17 minutes into the autograph session when we'd gotten through three people. And she was like, okay, I love both of you. Stop talking. You can say hello, thank you, and goodbye and you can repeat the lines that are in this trailer. So I know Asuna's line in that trailer. It was, even if a monster beats me and I die, I won't lose to this world. Because that was all I was allowed to say for two hours. <laughs> Along with hello, thank you, and goodbye. Because Bryce and I cannot be trusted. <laughs> it's funny because you can see it happening. I can totally see it happening. <laughs> Okay, cool. again, point made. <laughs> you know? Okay, Amazing. thank you, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, for me, it's a line that I get requested a lot by fans, so that's why it's like in my head too. And it's from Persona 5, and it's uh, during the Valentine's Day. If you do not choose Haru, uh, if, you're, if you cheat on her, then she says this to you. She says, um, take my chocolates, please before I crush them. Uh, <laughs> so cute! Oh my gosh, you're so cute! 
I'm also going to put tequila because of that episode of Opera Anman that she did. Yeah. So I had the pleasure of directing Xanthi last year, maybe in maybe in 2020, a really fun show called Opera Anman, which is like a transcontinental race show. And she played this darling French woman who is always taking care of Brandon McInnes' character. And he thinks he's such a man, and he gets into this man's game of like a, a drink of taking shots. And he has like one shot, and he's out. And she, of course, being like his good friend, will not let him be disgraced. So she just like, damn, we don't even know. We lost count of how much tequila she drank, but she drank everyone else under the table and just marches right out of that bar. <laughs> I wish I could do that in real life. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll try to answer quickly. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Um, so I really like doing voices, but I have a really bad stutter most of the time. So I was wondering if you had any tips for me with that. You sounded great just now. You sounded yeah. amazing. You sounded great just now. now. I think I think practice is super important. So anytime you can get comfortable speaking in front of people, taking acting classes. For me, I was always very shy, and playing a character allowed me to jump into their confidence and borrow their confidence. And then at the end of the day or at the end of the scene, I would go, wait. I did that. So I think it's just getting more comfortable because, I mean, you sounded fantastic. Yeah. Um, I always encourage people who are interested in acting and voice acting to read out loud whenever you have the opportunity. So even if you like reading comics or reading manga, read them out loud because we don't get to take home our scripts and study. We see the words for the first time seconds before we're going to say them. So that's a really important part of our job. And I know when I was younger, I used to read out loud all the time. I mean, I was an only child, nobody was around. So, <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, be good yeah. practice. Get a buddy or a group of friends and together and do it. I, I, I have a group of friends that I still meet like on a weekly basis and we will either uh, pull up scripts that we have trouble with and like get feedback and get direction just because it's, it's so much easier to have somebody else's um, outside point of view from your own. And also then you get to read in front of other people too. So yeah, I would definitely recommend something like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, oh, you look so cute. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> um, earlier you mentioned that you don't always like know um, what to be working on because of like coding and stuff like that. So have you ever like auditioned for something just for it to like turn around and be something kind of crazy? Like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, female characters in anime are not always portrayed the most yeah. respectfully. The most savory way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So most studios know to put disclaimers in their auditions mm -hmm. about things regarding content. So even if for some reason there is a code name for a show, there will also be like this show is TVMA, or it'll say like trigger warning for a certain character if that character's storyline is going to deal with things that could possibly be triggers for the actor in a negative fashion. So yes, and any actor or actress should never be discriminated against if they needed to back out of a project because they were not informed. That's not their fault. That's totally on the studio. Mm -hmm. So. Great question, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, um, I was just wondering what what like led you to go into voice acting? All of you. I loved cartoons growing up. Me and, too. Yeah, and uh, I just loved putting on different voices and reading stories out loud and playing all the characters and um, and the thing that I love so much about voice acting is that no matter what you look like, and Jeremy was talking about this, I get to play so many things that I wouldn't get to play on camera. Um, you know, right now, I play a lot of grandmas and I play a lot of babies. Uh, uh, and, you know, I, I'm not gonna be able to play the babies on camera anymore, and I've got a couple years before I'm gonna be able to play those grandmas. So, <laughs> so, so I love that there's so much more that I get to do with voiceover, um, so it's always appealed to me. 
I got into acting when I was five because I wanted to be on Barney. So that was my inspiration. That was my goal. Uh, and I didn't really know at that time that like voice acting was a thing. I just wanted to be an actor. So I took as many acting classes as I could. And then when I was seven, I started doing voiceover commercials because they needed three-year-olds. But three-year-olds can't read. So I played a lot of toddlers when I was seven and eight. And then I got a lot of voiceover experience and got hired for that. So uh, the inspiration and, and the, I guess, the goal when I got started was to work with the purple dinosaur. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so something that I noticed when I, like kind of what you were talking about earlier about like the difference between like American uh, and like Western how they're portrayed, yeah, 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 and like how women are portrayed. So I always like really enjoyed like the really like cool, like badass female characters. So like what are like your favorite like badass female characters that you've voice acted for? Cool question. Um, my favorite, and I still get to play her, is a Cammy White in Street Fighter. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I used to play Street Fighter as a kid. So like of all of the roles that I have, to me it is still probably the most meaningful. Because when that audition came around, it's been 12 or 13 years ago now, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And at that time, I was still a, a pretty young in the voice acting. I've been voice acting for three years. So I couldn't believe that I was getting to read for this. and. Uh, I did not think that I would be in it at all, and then I certainly didn't think that I would play Cammy because I knew the studio that was doing it was based in LA, and like they'll get a real British person, but I'm gonna read for it because I know the director and he asked me to read for her, so I will. And then that's what I booked, and I'm like, what? Oh, what? I still can't, I can't even about her. I love her so much, and, and she is definitely a badass. <laughs> I um, really liked uh, Sabako from River City Girls, if you need to play that. She's just like really badass, like uh, Yakuza lady, like very different than what I normally play. She's really tough and like, it was so cool, cool. that I got to play against type. <laughs> there's badass and then there's multifaceted. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, there are definitely, you know, the tough characters, but I think one of the things that I loved so much about playing Haruko, and you know, it was my very first anime ever, so I didn't really realize it at the time because I didn't have a, a huge point of reference. But years later, especially when we started getting ready to do the sequels, I think the, the thing that I loved so much about her character <coughs> is that there were so many different layers to her, that she was allowed to be crazy over the top in certain scenes. She was allowed to be unapologetically sexy in certain scenes. She was allowed to be independent, she was allowed to be a badass, and she was allowed to be tender and very vulnerable in moments. And I think that was a kind of a revelation to me as time went on, that uh, to not have, to, to not play a character that was a female character that was just one thing, the sweet archetype, the tough archetype, the femme fatale, but to, to be a woman and to have all those sides of you, that's, oh, I think, what I love. What about her. an honor. Like, what an iconic character, for yeah. real. <laughs> that's so cool. And I, I totally agree. It's, I've, gotten to, I've gotten very fortunate to play a lot of characters that are really cool and would fall in the badass category. It's so hard to pick one, but the ones that I narrow down to are the ones that are incredibly confident and have a lot of integrity. <laughs> and whether they're great in uh, like on the battlefield or they can like take anybody down they know who they are they're confident they're strong and even if that means like they're the class president or they're the nicest girl in class like they don't apologize for not being the girl who is the best uh on the volleyball team or whatever they know who they are and they they carry that and i think that is what being a badass is is like this is my lane this is who i am and I'm sorry if you don't like it. I, I know who I am and I'm proud of that. And that's something that I wish I embodied myself more often, which is why those are my favorite to play. Awesome. That I think is an excellent question Ooh. to wrap everything up with. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Yes. Yes. Everybody get out. There's a party in here. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.